Let's move on now to uh, Han Solo, a Star Wars story in trouble this week. I, I wrote a review on Han Solo that I was pretty excited about, and the, the, the hits just keep on coming with this movie. It seems like everybody's kind of worried about it. Since we last talked over the, about this movie over the course of January, a Russian website released what was reported as being an official image from the upcoming Star Wars movie. The artwork looked great. It had a 1970s feel. There was Han, there was Chewie, there was Daenerys, and an alternate-looking <laughs> Millennium Falcon. And immediately Disney was like, no, this is not official at all. And so then there, the next thing that happened, there was an quote-unquote official calendar that had the artwork. And then they said nothing. Ten days, maybe it was ten days later, uh, a little while later, there was a Lego set that released the official names of the characters and also had the artwork that was denied. Uh, there have been lots of past troubles with this film. Lord Miller were obviously uh, fired and replaced by Ron Howard. We've heard that Lawrence Kasdan and his son had written the greatest Star Wars script of all time and then had been completely ruined, um, either because of a bad script, which was supposed to be good, or because the directors were terrible, or because the actors were terrible. Despite being acclaimed in Hail Caesar, now Alden Erlenreich cannot act, been no trailer and rumors of a desire to pull it from theaters and put it on their streaming site as one speculate or one piece of speculation that i've read so my question to you is what do you believe and what don't you believe are you thinking this could be the fan four stick of the star wars universe what are your thoughts it'll be better than that movie i promise i promise you didn't even that. bring up josh trank when you talked about them getting rid of directors and for that i think that's you. right he was josh trank was supposed to do i think a boba fett movie if i'm not or was it the han solo movie i don't know it was one of those it was boba fett okay yeah which josh. which i'm glad we skipped too i have no expectation for this movie i wasn't excited about this movie when it was on track and announced i don't need a han solo backstory i'm ready for them to do stuff outside of the main people we're familiar with I have to say that all this chaos kind of makes me more interested in, in what they're going to come out with. I think they're in a really bad spot with how they spaced these movies out. Because my guess is, is the intention was we don't want to release Han Solo stuff while we're promoting Last Jedi. We want to keep them separate. But because the movie is coming up so quickly afterwards, and they've had all this turmoil behind the scenes, it just leads people to speculate that they're not releasing stuff because everything's awful, which it may may very well be but we don't know it could also be great and this has just been the plan and they're kind of forced to stick with it the artwork thing is hilarious to me we're past last jedi just own it if it's your stuff get it out there it's and this is the same company so you think they would have learned marvel had some trailers leak so they just released the trailers early then online so people could get the good quality stuff just do that now with han solo get us get us into this movie because it's not that far away it's pretty close after infinity war and some other deadpool i think is around that time there's competition this summer for things start promoting this start being official and, and letting us figure it out i cannot imagine for the life of me that they are going to take a ron howard han solo movie and yank it from theaters and put it on a streaming service so i don't believe that but i think this movie's going to be bad and it, i'm going to enjoy every minute of it being bad i think as well I am starting to get excited for this movie. I'm having a renaissance about Han Solo. I, it started with The Force Awakens. It uh, has continued with some of the artwork. The artwork looks so good. It does. Glover as Lando looks fantastic. There's Chewie. Like, what's up with the Falcon? Uh, Daenerys looks great. I think her name is Kira in this movie. And Sure. And, uh, you know, Erlen Reich... He looks enough like Han Solo where I feel like I want to buy it. And he seems to have that swagger. And I'm just starting to look forward to it. I was real worried about Rogue One. I watched Rogue One again today. And it keeps getting better for me every single time I see it. I love Jin Erso. I love Cassian Andor. And I love this time period in the Star Wars universe. And all the drama... You know, I was worried about that with Rogue One, and I was wrong. It was a great movie. And so I tend to believe that it's the same thing that they're doing that they do with Marvel. The only films that they promote widely in between all these kind of year-round are Avengers films. Black Panther didn't really start getting promoted until Thor Ragnarok was done. And so they all take their turn. And I wonder, yes, should they have moved it to December? Probably. I still can't fathom why they don't just own the winter at the same time, I think that's what's happening. Last Jedi is still in theaters. 
And as soon as that's done, that's when I expect this stuff to start coming out. I don't know if I'm just biased and I want that to be the truth, but I'm holding on. Well, I kind of wondered with the timing, I'm expecting that after Case Keenum's thrown his sixth touchdown in the Super Bowl. Oh, and we so were now going... you're talking shit. All right, now and, you're talking shit. You realize you just doomed yourself, and, right? And uh, I figured we were doomed before then, and we're going to commercial break. That would be the time they release a big trailer, or at halftime. I wonder who has the Super Bowl this year, if it's AB. I think it's NBC. I don't know, I don't know if Fox. you heard this, but Aaron Rodgers hurt his shoulder. I checked out after that, man. I got no oh, idea what's going on. Yeah, it must be weird having to you weird. know play with your second-string quarterback it instead hurts. of... Going to the NFC Championship on your third string quarterback with your second string running back and your two fifth round wide receivers. You're right. You guys are so amazing. It's almost like you've won all these Super Bowls. Oh, wait. Well. Can we talk about the, the mailbag question now? Yeah. Okay, great. Because I don't want to talk about the Vikings anymore. Uh, a friend of the program. This is from Kiffer. He wants to know, Neitzel, why does my refrigerator smell bad? Have you cleaned it lately? Because that can be a problem. Uh, we've had that, especially when we buy produce we don't eat, and you leave it in there, and then your kids push it to the back so they can try and grab all the treats that you've tried to hide in the back, and you forget about it. That would probably be my number one thing. Take some stuff out, wipe it down. Otherwise, just buy better smelling food. All right, that was our one question that we have for today's show. If you would like better questions, please email us at kidsseriouslyradio at gmail.com with your questions. The timing is good right now. There aren't a lot of people listening to the show. The chances are, if you email the show, you're going to get on the air. So, uh, with that, we are going to move into the centerpiece. For those of you new to Kids Seriously, what our plan is on the back halves of these podcasts is to rev- make a review of the Clone Wars animated series. All right, so we're going to turn this over to Luke Neitzel now with his thoughts on the Clone Wars animated movie. So we're going to have full spoilers for this movie. This movie came out in 2008, Star Wars The Clone Wars, directed by Dave Fellini, who would also serve as the showrunner for both the animated show and then for Rebels as well. Now, you had said earlier that this movie was a flop. I'm wondering if you know how much this movie made in total revenue worldwide. 64 million. 68 million. Ah, 68.3. 34 domestic? 35.2 35.2 domestic, oh, 33.1. Do you know what the budget was for this movie? 10. 8.5. Okay. So I don't think flop's quite the right word. Very financially successful. But critically acclaimed, <laughs> not so much. It has a 18% currently on Rotten Tomatoes, and then it also has an audience score of 38. So not Just reviewed even well. lower than your Last Jedi movie. It is. It is. Uh, I don't know if the alt-right was doing a bot campaign because there's too many women in Clone Wars. Is, but that, is that what you're sticking with? Is that what you're sticking with? It could be. Okay. Um, it's not just a bad movie. You're just sticking with that. All right. I'll take Cinescore, I guess. So the plot of this movie, what this movie is about, it is just after Attack of the Clones. So we are in full Clone Wars. V. Separatists led by Count Dooku and the Galactic Republic with the Jedi are fighting for different territories. Apparently, Jabba the Hutt's section of space is really, really important. He has hyperlanes that they mentioned once that they need to control. And someone has abducted his child because he apparently has a baby. The crux of this movie is that both the Jedi and Count Dooku and the Separatists are trying to be the ones to get the baby back to Jabba so that Jabba will support them in the war and let their side use his hyperlanes which they really, really need in the Outer Rim. Good hyperlanes. So this introduces Ahsoka Tano, who goes along with her new master, Anakin Skywalker, as they search for the baby. Count Dooku and uh, Ventress are on the other side. There is some nefarious dealings where we find out that maybe Count Dooku and Ventress were actually behind the abduction, along with a few surprises that I'm going to guess we're going to get into when we discuss this a little more. But that is the basic plot. Two sides, both trying to save Jabba's baby so that they can get control of his hyperlanes. What did you think was good about this movie? Well, we gotta my we gotta start off with what was good because uh like grandma grandma Madrid always said if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. So we'll start with what's nice. I like some of the characters. The Ventress was an awesome character in the original Clone Wars cartoon. I thought she had an awesome look. I mistakenly thought that she had come from that previous cartoon. She was actually created during the process of making the prequels, which I didn't know. But she, I thought, was a cool-looking character um, with a cool style. Didn't like Ahsoka Tano as much, but it introduces Ahsoka Tano, which, since I like her later, 
makes it important to me. Uh, I always want more Count Dooku. And it gives us Anakin not being whiny. And I think that's important. And we get a little bit of Obi-Wan too. It's continual action. Most of the action works. It follows that familiar Star Wars formula that hops from one action scene to the next. Dooku mentions killing Padme with extreme prejudice, uh, which is a call out to Apocalypse Now, which made me really happy. Obviously, it was directed by Coppola, who was a friend of Lucas's. The lightsaber duels were cool, especially Anakin versus Dooku. I like what they did in this movie with lightsaber battles, because this is just something I love when they do, is that most of the lightsaber battles were set in very dark spaces. So you have a very dark background and the really bright lightsabers coming through. I just think that that was awesome on screen. And the last thing, it does describe the tenuous nature of Jabba and the Republic, which becomes the Empire. And so it does explain that, though we'll talk about the stuff that I don't (laughs) like after we hear what you liked. So you hit the biggest thing for me that I really liked about this movie is this is the first characterization of Anakin Skywalker that I liked. He seemed like a rebel with some personality who was stretching the rules, but was also kind of interesting and fun. He was a little bit quippy. He wasn't wooden, as Hayden Christensen came off in in his portrayal of Anakin. So I think that was big, is that you have an Anakin you actually want good things to happen to, which we didn't necessarily get in the prequels. So I was very excited about that. 